Hello everyone, back to in today's uh, first video, doing an so update for today's first video. So uh, yeah, we're having a look at what's happening in terms of uh, sea surface temperature anomalies in the equatorial Pacific Ocean as far as La Nina and El Nino and all that kind of thing uh, is uh, is concerned. And I should go on have you uh, very shortly, just say coming up later on today, we're going to have the uh, e 7 30 day uh, forecast. So, uh, so that's going to be looking at where the next four weeks uh, for, uh, for, for Northern Europe, you know, uh, and uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, for you uh, later on uh, today. And we have a 10 to 14 day as well. So check out the two videos that are still uh, to come if you would like to do that. Uh, right, so let's get on with the ENSO uh, update. Let me just say, if you're enjoying the content on the channel, please uh, give us a like and uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you think. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, right, so I'm going to start off this uh, February uh, 2021 ENSO update with the cold and warm episodes by season. Uh, page from CPC, NCP, and uh, NOAA. So this is showing uh, all ANSA events, be they uh, El Nino or La Nina, right the way back to uh, 1950. So, for example, in 1954, 1955, we have a weak La Nina indicated by these uh, blue colours uh, just here. It goes on in 1956 as well. Uh, by the way, in 1957, 1958, we also have an El Nino uh, taking place. So that's an El Nino period from 57 to uh, 58. But no, very weak El Nino uh, from 58 to 59. So blue is La Nina, red, uh, blue negative is La Nina, uh, red positive is El Nino. Think of El Nino and La Nina as kind of like uh, turning the thermostat up and then turning the thermostat down. It's uh, it's a way that the Earth regulates its uh, its temperature by pumping out heat and then uh, cooling things down uh, very quickly. Right, so let's have a look at the uh, very latest thing. So we come down to uh, 2020 and we see that we have uh, for 2020 uh, El Nio uh, uh, ain't so neutral, uh, actually. Almost a borderline El Nio for a while. We did think that winter of 2019-2020 wasn't. El Nino uh, winter, but it wasn't actually. It turns out that it was then so neutral. We're into La Nina, uh, though, now. So you can see how these negative numbers start appearing uh, from the spring into the summer. And now we have, uh, look at this, have five blue numbers, five negative, five minus blue numbers. So this tells us that uh, we are now you know, easily in La Nina, and uh, La Nina has been designated as uh, as we knew it would. So to get a La Nina, and say the truth, uh, El Nino uh, designated, you have to reach some quite strict criteria. Uh, for La Nina, you have to be a uh, half a degree or more below average. So that is why these negative numbers just here, these three here, that's why those are black and not blue, because they are not reaching the required half degree below average temperature threshold. I have to add over five tri-monthly periods. So, so we have reached the required threshold over five tri-monthly periods. One, two, three, four, and five. And so this is why, uh, you know, uh, we have got uh, La Nina. We are in La Nina. We have had La Nina official designated. This is how sea service temperature is uh, well, looking what we did last week's, um, uh, last month's, I should say, uh, and so update. This is from the 29th of January. So uh, you can see that uh, when we did January's and so update, we have the signature of landing here through the Equator of Pacific Ocean, particularly central and western uh, base landing, you're less so in terms of being an eastern based uh, landing, you. But, but quite clearly, quite evidently, a uh, 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 landing here will be a central west based landing uh, signal in evidence. Right, that's how it looked last month. This is the latest uh, for February, uh, February uh, 19th. So the landing your signal goes on, not quite as strong uh, in the central and western part of the Ector Pacific Ocean as it was. Um, remember, ENSO is like the warming and cooling of the actual Ector Pacific Ocean from Peru just here to Indonesia uh, over there. Uh, and of course, this is the equator of the earth uh, just here. I should have explained that before. <laughs> right, so uh, let's get back to season of temperature. On said. So, uh, yeah, we've got the blue curse here. We've got the landing signal ongoing. Again, particularly central and western based, although we do see some 
Cool now if we see so tapped on in the eastern part of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean as well. So Lanina uh, goes on. Lanina is still with us uh, as we go from uh, January through to February. This is our subsurface temperature anomalies are looking. This is from the CPC, NCP and NOAA. PDF. This gets updated every week. So again, uh, with this having that's like the surface of the uh, of the um, uh, of the Pacific Ocean just there, actual Pacific Ocean just there, and we would have a uh, Peru just here. We'd have Indonesia over there, and these would be the depths of the ocean, very, very deep ocean, uh, of course, the Pacific. So we've got all this blue. These are cold and average subsurface temperature anomalies supporting uh, this uh, landing. You go all the way down to like 150 uh, meters. So, so yeah, we've got, we've got, you know, a cold and average subsurface temperature anomalies at depth. We have got a mass of warmer than average subsurface temperature anomalies um, over here in the uh, in the western part of the uh, 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 Equatorial Pacific Ocean uh, at at real depth. So so with this, like the, we're starting around a hundred meters, we're going out two hundred fifty meters with those um, warm and average subsurface temperature anomalies. At the moment, this is clearly a landing uh, scene. We have to keep an eye on what these uh, warm and average subsurface temperature anomalies are going to do. Uh, they're going to around four to six degrees above average at their core, just here. Um, so yeah, you know, we'll keep an eye on it, but at the moment, it definitely looks as though, uh, for the time being, anyway, landing uh, will will continue. But the sea surface temperature, obviously, cold and average, the subsurface temperature, and obviously, most of the actual situation are cold and average. So, so for now, uh, landing uh, definitely goes on. Sonos Nation Index is showing this uh, as well. So the SLI is just a, uh, it's just a uh, way of measuring uh, the abstract setup. Uh, really, it's looking at uh, it's looking at air pressures between uh, Darwin and Tahiti. Uh, and when the SLI Sonos Nation Index is uh, positive, then the abstract state will be reflective of La Nina. When the SLI is negative, the abstract state will be reflective of El Nino. So if we come down here, you can see that uh, most days are still posting very positive. Uh, returns. So, for example, we've got 17th of February uh, plus 28.77. We've got the uh, 18th of February at plus 29.40. We've got the 19th of February at plus 22.82. 20th of February at plus 21.71. 21st of February at plus 19.79. And 22nd of February at plus 18. 0.25. These two columns here are the actual uh, air pressures for Tahiti and also for Darwin uh, as well. So, so the positive phase of the SOI continues. The atmosphere is coupled with the ocean, and definitely for now, uh, you know, uh, landing it goes on. The SOI 30 day average is very positive. That's this red uh, line just there. Uh, and the 90 day average, which is the um, you know, dash line, that is also uh, very positive as well. So, it's all, all very reflective of landing it for now. Let's see what the model output is suggesting is going to happen. So we're going to have a look at some uh, models before we go. Uh, this is how uh, CANSIPS is uh, looking at the moment. So, of course, at the moment, we've got this cold and average sea surface temperature that is reflective of uh, La Nina. Let's run through uh, my period and see what happens. So uh, that's March, that's April, that's May. You see the La Nina gets a little bit weaker as we go into the spring, but it's still there, uh, albeit at a weaker level. Now, into the summer, uh, and on into the autumn, you see La Nina is beginning to re-strengthen with uh, CANSIPS through the summer and into the autumn. So that gets to December 2021, by which time, by the end of the year, we're back into, like, uh, uh, a week to borderline moderate La Nina event. So CANSIPS wants to weaken the La Nina back towards Enzo neutral through the spring and into early summer, but never truly going away and then re-strengthening re -strengthening again later on in the summer and through to the autumn. La Nina comes back later on in the year.
Chevis V2 is also uh, going for that as well. So, uh, again, with this, got our temperature orders on the side. Let's change colour. Temperature orders on the side. Uh, and dates are along bottom monthly periods. So, current position, uh, that's the only point and a half degree below average, uh, by the way. So, the current position is that we are on the border of, of Ainsa Neutron, the cold side, or Lanina. We're just hovering around half degree below average. But look at the dash, black dash line which is dropping again, uh, that's the ensemble mean, that's dropping again into uh, weak to moderate landing your territory as we go from the summer and into the autumn. So we've got CANSIPS and also CFS V2 wanting to uh, take us back to Enso Neutron, the cold side, through the spring, and then uh, redevelop the landing re-intensified again through the summer and into the autumn. It's how the ECM uh, WF is looking. So, uh, again, we've this got temperature and noise on the side, dates, but periods on the bottom. Currently, we're around here. So, uh, we're just into uh, landing it to ENSO neutral type conditions. It looks like uh, the ECM ensemble probably wants to get us back to, um, to ENSO neutral uh, by the time we go through to the latter part of the spring. And also into the early summer as well. After that, we have a lot of scatter. So we've got we've got most on, most of the ensemble members are keeping up, keeping us at uh, Enso neutral on the cold side. We have got these few stragglers up here that are going for like a weak El Nino, and we've got these ones down here that are going back into La Nina territory. Definitely, ECMWF is not as bullish as like Cancips or the CFS in getting us back into La Nina. Though, uh, through through uh, the summer and into the autumn, Jams Tech uh, looks like this. So uh, again, we can see got a temperature on the side, dates and month appears on the bottom. Current position uh, where we are right now is just here on the cold side of Enso Neutral, really. And uh, Cansips wants to get us back to Enso Neutral and keep us there, uh, really. So the red line is like the ensemble meme. That is actually going to slightly uh, weak El Nino uh, type territory, like borderline Enso Neutral to, uh, to El Nino. Um, uh, just under half a degree above average uh, later in uh, the summer. I wouldn't take that overly seriously, but it definitely, Jam's take along the ECM, definitely wants to keep us closer to Enso Neutral. Quite a bit of scatch as well. These are going for uh, El Nino events. These are going for, for a redevelopment of La Nina. So quite a bit of scatter there. But Jam's take along the ECM wants to uh, have us back at Enso Neutral by the spring and, uh, and then take, keep us at Enso Neutral through the summer and into the autumn. Uh, UK Met looks like uh, this. So uh, this is the uh, CSEF temperature only for March, April, May for spring. So this is like the uh, weakening signal of uh, La Nina just here. Going back to Enso Neutral then uh, through the spring. But by the trimonthly period of uh, 4 to 6, which is May, June, July, um, you can see we have actually got a little bit of a little bit of a warmer than average sea surface temperature anomaly starting to appear in the eastern part of the actual Pacific Ocean. Now we are we are at Enso neutral there, but could that be starting to go towards um, El Nino? Possibly. Look what the Beijing Climate Center model does. So this is the sea surface temperature only forecast from Beijing Climate Center uh, for February. Of course, we've got that proper La Nina signal. As we get through to August, though, look what's happened. That's reversed into an El Nino. Uh, the Beijing Climate Center is going for an El Nino, quite a strong El Nino as well, with those deep red colors, like two, two degrees or more above average here. So very, very quickly, the Beijing Climate Center wants to get us into a strong El Nino uh, through this summer. And by the winter, this is December, uh, by the winter, this has become like a moderate to borderline strong Madokai or Madoki El Nino, central base El Nino. You see how the sea uh, surface temperature anomalies at, are at their uh, most intense through a central part of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, less so in the eastern Equatorial Pacific Ocean. So the base climate sense is going for. Uh, a very, very uh, rapid flip from La Nina to El Nino through this summer. And then by the end of the year, by the winter of 21, 22, that is a Madoki or Madokai central-based El Nino. 
uh, from Beijing Climate Centre. So, yeah, very interesting, very interesting developments uh, with uh, this month's ENSO update. Um, it's all to, it's all to play for us, all to be revealed what's going to happen. Of course, you expect a lot of uncertainty at this time of year. We are in the spring predictability barrier. So, uh, we're going to know uh, a lot more uh, once we get past sort of April, May time about where things are going. But uh, there's a range of options there. Uh, either, you know, it's possible that we might see La Nina re-strengthening and, and we have a double two-year La Nina. Uh, we might go back to Enzo Neutral and stay there. Or we may even see El Nino uh, kicking off later on in the year. It's all to be revealed. It's all to play for. But for the moment, for the time being, La Nina goes on. Uh, and we'll see where we go uh, from, uh, from the spring onwards. If you enjoy this sense of update, please smash your like button. It's very kind of what you think. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Have another ENSO update for you at the end of March. Uh, we're going to be back later on with uh, the ECM 30 day forecast and also 10 to 14 day. So come back for all of that then. Uh, but for this month's ENSO update, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.